LSU has been putting quality wide receivers into the league as of late, starting with guys such as Ruben Randall, Odell Beckham, and Jarvis Landry. And eventually they transitioned to the guys like DJ Chark, Russell Gage, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Terrace Marshall. All these guys have become big names, and they're really starting to produce some really quality wide receivers. With Marshall and Chase gone now though, many are asking who is next up for the Tigers, and the answer is quite obvious if you watched the season at all last year. Kayshawn Butte had a record-breaking performance against Ole Miss, and has the record for most receiving yards in an SEC game ever, and it happened as a true freshman. He's been a star in the making ever since he stepped foot on campus, and if you followed him in high school, everyone knew he was going to do big things at LSU. So yeah, today we're going to talk about the rise of LSU's next great receiver, Kayshawn Butte, and why he is next up. But before we get into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you love college football. Give the video a like if you want to support what I'm doing here on YouTube. Suggest what topic, player, or video I could do next. And turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about Kayshawn Butte. Let's quickly talk about how Butte became a big time name to begin with. He was born and raised in the bayou of Louisiana as he grew up in a crime riddled town called New Iberia. He played football from six years old on and was always seen as a big athlete in the area. He eventually became a five-star recruit and was one of the top wide receivers in the country and it was going to come down to some local blue bloods for his talents. It was widely contested that it would be a battle between LSU and Alex for Butte and LSU would be the first to offer him in 2018 and four months later he would unofficially visit the campus during the Mississippi State game and Butte would commit to the Tigers after that. Alabama would come calling soon though and they recruited him as hard as any school possibly could. They offered him in May of 2019 right as his junior year drew to a close. In June, he went to a Bama camp, and a month later, he unofficially visited Tuscaloosa. It wouldn't be the last time he made his way to Alabama, though, as three months after his unofficial, he would officially visit campus the same week the Tide would play Arkansas. In December, Pete Golding, the Tide's top recruiter, made the trip to his hometown and visited him, and some thought maybe he could flip. But his commitment would never waver, and he stayed committed to Ed Orgeron. As a senior, he caught 47 passes for 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns, and he also rushed for 874 yards and had 12 more touchdowns on the ground. One game that really stuck out was a 5 touchdown, 300 all purpose yard performance against Turling's Catholic High School, and that included a 97 yard kickoff return touchdown. He would eventually get his fifth star as well, as according to 24 7 Sports, he was the number one player in Louisiana, the number two wide receiver, and the 24th best player in the class of 2020. In the words of an LSU sports journalist, here was the outlook of his career Quote, I see Butte having a Jarvis Landry and Justin Jefferson kind of career. He'll flash potential as a freshman, erupt as a sophomore, and be a first or second round pick whenever he declares. He came in as a freshman, expecting to be behind Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, and Racy McMath, but then everything hit and Chase opted out. Marshall would eventually opt out as well, and McMath was a disappointment, so the door opened up at the end of the year for Butte to become a star, and he went through it. He played a decent amount in their first four games, but he would not catch his first touchdown until Halloween came around, as it was against the Auburn Tigers. He didn't do much against A&M or Arkansas, but he would have his coming out game against the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. In that game, he had 8 catches for 111 yards and broke out against the Tide. Against Florida, he had another great game as he had 5 catches for 108 yards and a touchdown in the crazy shoe toss fog upset. Finally, he had the game that broke the college football world and put his name on the map. In a shootout against Ole Miss, he had 14 receptions for 308 yards and 3 touchdowns and people couldn't believe their eyes. This set both the LSU and SEC record for receiving yards in the game, and it was truly just mind-boggling, and he was putting up NCAA 14-like numbers out there. He went viral from that and finished the season with 45 catches for 735 yards and 5 touchdowns. So the talent is obviously there, but what makes him the next great LSU wide receiver? Well, he has shown the flash to start him already. He already holds an all-time SEC record and will be the number one wide receiver on the depth chart this fall, and for the next couple of years, so he will get plenty of targets, and I think he has the work ethic and drive to be a special player. I fully expect a breakout year for him in 2021, and then another big year in 2022, and then he will hear his name called in the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft. But what do you guys think? Let me know what you think of Butte and how you guys do in 2020, and if you're a fan of college football in general, let me know another player, whether that's a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or defensive star, who you think will break out into a big time player in the coming years, or especially this year. Before you go, if you want to support this video, hit that like button, subscribe if you are new here, suggest another topic I could do next, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my documentary about the downfall of Les Miles. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.